you know what I hate about being a psychologist is you learn all this stuff about dysfunction. And then I look at it and go, that's me. I got to change that. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? I do that. Anyway, it's kind of a problem with this kind of work. But it actually helps. This stuff helps, guys, you know, when we start to implement it. So one of those ideas um, that I want to talk with you about for a moment is we always hear a couple of terms. When you get into these arenas, you always hear a couple of terms out there. One of them is self-talk. You need to change your self-talk. You ever heard that? Change how you talk to yourself. You're so hard on yourself. You know, all this stuff about the voices in our heads. It's another way we hear it. That's one term we hear. Another term is um, the critical voices or the tapes in your head. That's what they used to say back when we had tapes. Now I guess it'd be the the digital files in your head. So what do we do about that? Well, here's what we know. Here's what the research tells us, that basically in every arena in life, for example, if you look at some of the most research aspects of treatment for anxiety and depression and other ailments, PTSD and others, one of the most researched things that people can do that we know actually changes things is to change how you're talking to yourself. Another way of saying that is how you're thinking inside about yourself. Because sometimes those voices can be critical, scary, limiting, failure-oriented, paralyzing, and a bunch of other crap that we don't want living in our heads. And yet we just kind of keep it playing in our heads all the time. You know why? Because it's automatic. And that's what the research shows that these, the, you know, it's like music, you get in the elevator, well, you didn't push the button, but it's playing anyway. Well, in the elevator in your head, the music that's playing, unless proactively we're doing something to change that, automatically is going to, if there is stress involved, and that's a key component, if there is stress involved, there's chemistry working that's activating all this stuff. And the, it's like hitting play on the, you know, stereo. And all of a sudden, oh, you're going to let, you know, you can't do that. Last time you did that, it didn't turn out well. They're going to be bad. Oh, what if you lose? What if nobody comes? What if you invite them and they say no? Why would they hire you? You've never even had any experience. I bet they've already closed that position. Oh, you know what? She wouldn't go out with me. Or, or what if, you know, I could try that, you know, but most businesses fail. I don't know. It's too, I'd want to go back to school. But what if people thought, I mean, I, I, what if people think I'm stupid? What if, what if I flunked the course? I mean, it's been so long. I don't even know. It's like a constant, constant voice in your head. So here's what you'll hear people come along and say. Well, you need to change the way you're talking to yourself. You need to change your self-talk. You need to change the critical voices in your head. Do you need to do that? Yeah, you do. Because one of my favorite verses says, as a person thinks in their heart, which means internally, so are you. That's what the Bible says. Or it also says, by the transforming of your mind, you're going to be able to find what God wants for you, how he made you, what his will is. By transforming the way you think. Remember that story where God sent the spies out to go look at the promised land? He said, look, now, translate this into your life. Translate this into your life. I've got a better relationship for you out there. I've got a new career step for you out there. I've got healing for you out there from, from this depression or this anxiety. I've got reaching a goal out there for you in your future. That's a promised land. I've got getting out of debt. I've got, think of all the promised lands. And don't write me an angry email saying this is prosperity gospel. It's not. God tells us, he tells us that he wants to move us forward in all areas of our lives. Okay. So everybody's got some sort of 
hopefully a promised land in the next place problem you want to fix. Remember the story? He sent some folks out there to take a look over the fence. In other words, to look at what they don't have yet. See, a lot of times we're not going to get a life that we want until we can see it before it exists. It's called a vision. It's called a desire. It's called faith. It's called like creating. It's called improvement. It's called a goal. It's called a vision. Whatever you want to call it. Where you are today in your relationships, in your health, whatever, sometimes it's not where you want to be. And so you've got to really think about and see and have a vision for what you want it to be. That's first. So what did he do? He sent the he sent the 12 folks out there to look over the fence. What is that? To get a vision of this promised land. So guess what happened? They go and they look at it. Oh, I could have a job that I want. Oh, I could have a better relationship. Oh, I could possibly go back and start to work on a degree. Oh, I could get a part-time thing and start to pay off some of this debt. Oh, I, I could. They're looking at it and they're seeing it. And here's what happened. 12 people looked at it, had the idea, had the vision. 10 of them had really bad voices in their head. Oh, the monster. Oh, there's too No, we could never do that. Oh, we're too small. We're too stupid. The obstacles are too big. Oh, we could never do it. But there were two of them. And they ran back with their tail between the legs. And there were two of them, Joshua and Kayla. And they looked over that thing and said, hey, <laughs> If God is with us, we can do this. Sure, there's obstacles. We can beat them. We can overcome this. They had a different voice in their head. So here's your task. Whatever your fence you're looking over to look at, and I want that in my life. And 10 voices are saying, but you can't pull that off. You're going to fail. You're too stupid. You've never done anything like that before. Whatever those are. How do we get to being Joshua and Caleb in our head? Well, see, what a lot of the self-help books are going to tell you is that you have to start to do that for yourself. 100% absolutely true. We have to begin to think differently. And you do have some control of that. I remember when my oldest daughter, Olivia, was uh, she had a, I think I can't remember what grade it was like third grade something like that she, she had a pretty tough teacher which was a great gift that she had but she was tough so Olivia for a while she was like she did, the night before she started thinking about oh no what if I get called on I gotta have it you know and she started to develop this little kind of you know voices in her head worry thing and she couldn't go to sleep so one night she goes Daddy! And I said, I said, Olivia, go to sleep. She goes, I can't sleep. So I go in the room. And I go, what's the problem? She said, I can't sleep. What do I? And then she literally said, what do I need to think about to go to sleep? And I said, Olivia, here's what you do. Count some sheep. She goes, how do you count sheep? And I said, okay, so picture you got a bunch of sheep and there's a fence, okay? And watch them jump over and just keep counting them. Don't stop counting them. Don't ever stop. And don't worry about going to sleep. Just keep counting them. Just keep counting them. Just keep counting them. Just keep counting them. I promise you, if you don't stop counting them, I promise you, if you don't stop counting them, you'll go to sleep. Okay, night, Daddy. So I think I've solved the problem. Five minutes later, Daddy! I go, what do you want now? So I go in there. I said, Olivia, what? She goes, my sheep keep crashing into the fence i go olivia they're your sheep make them jump over the fence these are your sheep she goes what they keep i said olivia they're your sheep get them over the fence good night so then she kind of learned <laughs> but but the point is they're our sheep they're in our heads now granted Sometimes they're so big in PTSD and other places, they do overwhelm us. And so sometimes when you tell people, 
Well, just you just need to talk to yourself better. Well, all of the other stuff is so much bigger than this feeble little whisper of the positive thought in there that it gets wiped out and washed out and just just destroyed. And they go, see, that doesn't work. Well, not really. It does work, but it's like a muscle that's got to be built. Okay, so number one is, yes, you have to do this, and yes, it's going to be hard, and yes, you have to keep doing it, because what we're talking about is something called neuroplasticity, which is the development and the growth of new neurological patterns that only comes through, like any other muscle, repetition. And see, the reason those critical voices are so strong is you have repeated them so many times that like water running out of a gutter onto a dirt yard, that it's going to keep going the same way. It digs a deeper and deeper rut. That's a neurological pattern in your head that has now become an automatic habit. I say habit, but it's an automatic firing. And it's deep and it's strong. Big deal. You know why? Because what we've learned through neuroscience and a bunch of other stuff is that that doesn't have to rule us. What we got to do is start a new path and keep doing it and keep doing it just like the water and keep doing it, keep doing it. Don't stop. Keep doing it. And it gets deeper. But here's the problem. Where's the water going to come from? See, I really believe in changing your thinking, obviously. I'm talking about it, right? But I also believe that in reality, there's no such thing as self-help in the purest sense of the word. Because self-help always, in part, my ability to do things for myself always in part comes from having received a bunch of stuff from the outside. You didn't get those critical voices entirely from yourself. You got them because you've had critical voices in your life. Parents, grandparents, I don't know who it was for you, teachers, coaches, siblings, bad experiences, abuse, the outside world puts these tapes into your head, right? Now, some of it does come from some stuff inside of us, but a lot of it comes from how you've been treated. What's in your head? I'll never forget a little, little five-year-old girl in my office one time. She knocked something over. And all of a sudden she goes, bad girl, bad girl, bad girl, bad girl. She didn't dream that up. That's what she had been taught. She'd internalize that voice. So if the bad voices, a lot of them come from the outside, where are the good voices going to come from? From the outside. This is why, and then we'll go to some calls. This is why it's kind of four or five ingredients in changing these critical voices. Number one is change the critical voices. Olivia, they're your sheep. Okay, so as much control as you can take, and you only know how much control you can take, not when you stop taking control and give up, but when you're continuing to take control, and sometimes it gets overpowered, but you still continue. And you'll gain strength. Keep doing it. Write it down. Log it. Remind yourself. Keep doing it. 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 You're getting tired of hearing me, right? Well, at some point, your brain's going to get tired. Say, okay, I'll do it. And it's going to become automatic. Number one. Number two, when the loud ones come, ignore them. I'm not going to tell you to say stop them because some of them are automatic and they're going to be playing in the background. I'm in an office right now. If somebody started vacuuming in the, in the hallway, I, I couldn't turn it off, right? Well, maybe I could. I don't know. Not and stay here. But let's say there's some noise going on out there. I can't turn it off, but I can ignore it and keep talking to you and stay engaged. Well, when you stay engaged with what you're doing and you just ignore the noise, then it diminishes. And we know that it starts to go away. But the third thing is we want a lot of people around us and surrounding ourselves 
with the voices. I believe in you. We can make it into the promised land. We can do this. Don't listen to that. You can do it. I don't care what they said to you. It's not true. God don't make no junk. We love you. You can do it. It doesn't matter if you fail. We'll pick you up. Try it. I don't care if you screw it up. We'll do it again. I don't care if you don't do it right. We'll do it again. It doesn't. And you keep those, keep those, keep those. This is why when people go to 12-step groups, they finally get sober. They got new voices in their head. Everything we know from the research says that the stuff in our head is contagious. We get it. Catch it. So if you're going to catch it anyway, relationship is contagious. We know that. What are you going to catch? What kind of voices are you going to catch? You know, listen to the ones. Are you going to stop those and put yourself in a circle with some people that think differently? That's when they really begin to change. And then you start to act on them and you pour nitroglycerin on this thing. You start to act in accord with the positive voices in faith. And like Joshua said, we can conquer this land. Well, he wasn't a fantasy. He crossed the fence and went and did it. So there you go.